Uh, Drake, if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, this is your 87 game with uh, with Inter Miami, and you're gonna be the top player presence in our team. I didn't know that. <laughs> ah. yeah, I, yeah, That's why I'm I, here. I, yeah, I was uh, <laughs> again. I take it game by game. Of course, this is you know my third season. I guess getting minutes uh, on the MLS level, and of course I played in some you know like Open Cups and Leagues Cups, so that might have added to the tally. But uh, that's I guess some cool news to you know <laughs> having been with the club for I guess since the inaugural season into now you know playing in my 87th game you know, shows you how time flies. So you are our record, our record man now for the Inter Miami. It's a, it's a different, and it was your birthday this week also, right? Oh, October. <laughs> oh, October. Yeah. yeah. That's, see, one out of two, I get it right. Yeah. <laughs> Drake, I want to take you back a little bit because you know all of a sudden you became a captain for this team, um, which yeah. I'm sure it's a huge accomplishment. But um, can you kind of take us through the conversations with uh, the, how you took the opportunity of being a captain? I mean, this is a, a, a team with big names, you know. After all, obviously. Messi, there, there could be a, some other options, and yet they decided to go with you as a captain. Can, can you take us through that process? Yeah, I remember the first time I captain was against the New York Red Bull last year, and I just saw the, the flag and the armband in my locker, and it just kind of made me a little bit emotional. But, um, you know, I, I think it's just something as, like, a, I think goalkeepers are natural leaders, and I think, you know, it's, of course, an honor to captain the team. And, you know, I think there's a lot of guys on our team who are fit for the job. And I think that's a huge advantage is because, you know, guys can step up in different games in different ways. And um, I'm glad that Tata sees me as one of those leaders in, like, the locker room and on, like, the field. So um, it's definitely something that, you know, I, I, I take pride in. And, you know, when I do get to wear the armband, I try and do my best and uh, do what I can for my teammates. Is your approach any different at all? Do you try to, do you try to communicate a little bit more with your teammates? Um, um, does, does that change anything for you? Yeah, I mean, like, I'll do, like, the pregame talk in the locker room. That might be the only thing that changes. But, again, I, I try and just, you know, I try and lead the same way every single day, whether I'm wearing with the captain band or not. Um, I think it's good to have a routine and be consistent. And maybe when you're wearing the captain band, you you know, might feel a little bit more pressure. But I think it's good pressure, and it uh, puts you in a situation to grow and to lead and uh, helps me develop as, like, a player. Drake, has it been difficult to you that Papa asked you to play out with your feet a lot, not just like throw the ball out. And he asked you to play with your feet and play with the defenders. Has that been difficult to adapt for you? No, no. I mean, I think building out is a part of the game. Of course, there's some situations that are going to be more challenging than others, but it's the style of soccer we want to play. And, you know, that's part of getting me being able to adapt to the style that the coach wants to play and be developing as a player and having all the tools I can to help my team win. What are you expecting at New England? It's going to be. Kind of like Arrowhead, you know, a huge football stadium, 64,000 or whatever. How, how do you think your, your team responds to those situations? And what are you expecting from that team? They've been struggling a lot this year. Yeah, I think I think for us, you know, we've played, in, like you said, played in front of big crowds. And it's becoming more of a, a normal thing for us. And I think, again, just any time we play a team, whether it's home or away, it's an opportunity for us to get points. So I think the focus is on us. Of course, we have to do our work throughout the week to get ready for that but um, I think going there and you know implementing our style and competing is kind of all we can ask for. You know, both, like, three points. You talk about Nations League, you, got, you won a trophy with a national team, now you got Copa America, is that something you are thinking about making that roster and, and, and fighting for a spot on the national team? Yeah, so something like that is, you know, I think the way I get called back in is just by being consistent and playing well here with like my team. So, you know, I think it's kind of like that day-by-day -day approach to where I just take care of business and, you know, do the best that I can, per perform well throughout the season, then I'll get a, a call back. But, again, it's, it's in the future, so I'm not necessarily thinking about that. It's kind of what I can do day-by-day -day to help me get to that point. Are you now in more communication with Greg Walker and the staff than you were before, or it's the same? It's kind of the same. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've of course definitely built a relationship with them the more times I go to camp, which is a good thing. But again, it's not like I'm texting them every week, like, hey, what's going on? You know, but there's definitely uh, a, a feeling that when I go, it's not like I'm meeting them for like the first time. A little you bit more. You are one of the players in that roster. Does that make you like, feel you're doing your job well and, and building up in the team? 
Yeah, yeah, of course. I mean, anytime you can get a call internationally, whether you're playing the MLS or overseas in one of the best leagues, I mean, I, I think it's a huge honor. So um, to be called up while playing the MLS is great. But again, I think it's just more important about how you perform and how you conduct yourself and what kind of teammate you are. And uh, if you're playing at a level that the coaches see is fit for you to join the team, whether you're in the MLS or not, I think it's a good sign. You have a unique perspective on the field, like staring out from between the posts. How have you seen players like Busquets, Jordi Alba, Suarez, and Messi impact players during the game, giving them comments, and really developing these academy players during the actual game? Yeah, there's definitely like a high level of communication going on, whether it's vocal or just like positionally. You know, I think they understand you know, where to be at the right time. So when you have players who are in the midfield or in our back line or you know, getting subbed on, uh, I think it's important for them to be aware of where experienced players are, but also uh, just recognizing like the flow of the game, uh, what spaces they can infiltrate and what runs they can make. And I, I think the communication from them is super important for us. Uh, I want to ask you about, um, if can you talk about the integration of, of Cello and now Franco Negri coming back? I mean, you, you have a good view of, of what they're doing. Can you just talk about what each of them brings on, on those two sides? Yeah. Well, I think both of them are extremely hard workers. I think they're very aggressive, their style of play, their mentality is to really go for it. And I think we need that on like the field is very competitive players, especially out wide. You know, we want to sometimes get our pullbacks high and wide. Sometimes we need them to defend and they definitely have the capacity to do both to, to do both of them. Can I just ask, how, over the time that you've played, uh, have Last you noticed, uh, have you noticed, what change have you noticed with the support? How, how have you noticed the support? Yeah, change? it's definitely interesting because the inaugural season was essentially the pandemic year. So mm. I, I remember when we were playing games and there was nobody in the stadium. You know, and then to go from that, and each year to build up to a point where you know we're selling out games, is is massive. Mm -hmm. And I think the support's always been there. It's just a matter of the club and the sport growing more than like the U.S. So it's uh, been it cool to experience, of course. Mm -hmm. Of course, to even go from a perspective of not starting and then to being on the field. I think you know whenever even like when I, for example when I run out for warm-ups you know we get like a round of applause you know so it's like <laughs> you're pretty cool just to get the support there even before like like the game starts and uh, that's a you know a hat off to our fans and the community for supporting us even through the good times and the bad because um, you know that's how pro sports is there's ups and downs so uh, whether they're here for us for a loss or here for us lifting a trophy they've been great. Thank you guys.